hope you all are fine i am fine too i thank god welcome back to my channel if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for returning back here thank you for your love thank you for your support but if it is your first time here on my channel hello welcome to my channel please before you leave remember to subscribe and when you subscribe click on that notification bell you will find it down there so that you'll be the first one to be notified whenever i upload a new video i promise you you will always enjoy every content that i upload on this channel so dear friends in today's video actually i had not planned to do this video today <laughs> but something came up i got a comment in one of the videos that i posted it is an online dating success love story of a kenyan lady called sharon if you guys know sharon and family yeah she's a kenyan lady based in germany married to a german guy and a content creator those who have not checked out sharon and family please go check her out but Today, why I'm talking about Sharon is because that person commented on the video I did of Sharon's love story. And the comment is the reason to why I am here today. So guys, a few days ago, there is a Kenyan lady who lost her life after meeting a guy that she met online. They chatted, I don't know how the story went, then went to an Airbnb in Nairobi, took her life in a very very brutal way may her soul rest in peace amen but i am not here to judge this kenyan lady that lost her life i'm not here to talk about how everything went because she is not here to defend herself she is not here to tell her own part of the story everyone will come up with their own story pretending to know everything but we all know that the truth is with that poor lady that lost her life and that criminal so i cannot come here and start telling you that i know everything <laughs> No, guys, I don't know everything. But after that horrible thing happening, that lady losing her life with a guy that she met on online dating apps, came in lots of other ladies with evidence how they were tortured after meeting that guy online, then agreed to meet in an Airbnb. And one of the ladies said that invited the guy at her house. After arriving there, you know, things turned out differently than she imagined. Because this guy had a tendency of life-threatening his victims so that he can rob from them. So he puts a knife on your neck and tells you, you have to give me your M-Pesa PIN number or your bank account, you know, the password, so that this guy can transfer all the money into his account so yes guys that is how that guy used to treat ladies that he could meet on online dating apps and, and then later on organize for a meeting a physical meeting so the ladies came up with evidence and they were even showing the marks that that guy left on them so to the comment that i got because i wanted to explain to you where all this is coming from so some lady came and wrote on the comment section that there is a kenyan lady who lost her life after meeting a guy on online dating apps dating apps are dangerous so guys it's not that I am so angry at that comment of that lady, not at all. But in every story, we have got something to learn from it. Whether it's a bad story, whether it is a good story. And guys, I've always advised you that when you are on online dating apps, be very careful. Because the way you are going to act, the way you are going to behave, your choices... When you are on online dating apps will either put you in trouble will either make you go under depression or will make you find a right guy that quality guy so the problem is not about the dating apps if you're out there after hearing this story you are like oh my god no i'm off 
on dating apps, dating sites. I'm going to forget about my dream, you know, of finding a quality guy online. You are wrong, my sister. You are very, very wrong. Because the problem is not the dating apps or dating sites. No, the problem is us who uses these dating apps. If you are a woman, you are on the dating apps, you have to stand on your ground. You have to know your value. Stop being desperate. I told you guys, if you are searching for a white guy, the things that you could look into while dating, you know, a black guy, same, same way or same, same things, you should look at them while dating this white guy. You want to find any man of any color, maybe a black guy, maybe a white guy, maybe an Asian guy. Remember who you are. You are a lady. A lady should act feminine. A lady should respect herself. A lady should be respected. We African people, we have got our own culture and traditions, right? When it comes to dating, the way our parents brought up what we were taught, you know, as a woman, if you are lucky, you know, to grow up with your mother, how your mother taught you. I told you guys I lost my mother when I was very, very little, but I can even remember the things that my mother used to teach me when I was little. And when you look at all that, I don't think as a woman, you should go on online dating apps, you start chatting with a guy, you don't know this guy very well, you don't know where he lives, you don't know what kind of a job he does, you don't know his family at all at all. And then you start organizing for a meeting to make matters worse, you bring this guy into your house. Really, is that how your parents brought you up? I don't think so. Really, is that how a woman, you know, should behave? Not at all. Because when we look at it as women, in a good way, guys, don't take it a very negative way. You know, we are very vulnerable. So we have to be very careful. We have to be with a guy that will make us feel protected but how do you feel protected by a guy after knowing him very well not because he has got money not at all <laughs> you don't feel protected by a guy after knowing his reach no <laughs> by knowing the roots of this guy by knowing this guy's life Okay, dear beautiful ladies, it really makes me sad to hear all these horrible stories. So guys, I couldn't keep quiet at it. And as an online dating coach, someone who always comes here weekly to talk about online dating, then you hear all these things, then you get such kind of comments, of course, I have to speak out and lead you through the right way. If you follow online dating rules, you are going to find that right guy and nothing bad is going to happen to you because you've got lots of testimonies of ladies that really found quality guys and they are now happily married. So with all that said, I think the title of this video, <laughs> you guys saw it, I talked of me almost losing my life. I remember giving this story, you know, some years back, but due to that, most of you that came in here were all into online dating. I'm so sure you haven't come across that story. And at that time when I gave that story, I just gave it as a story. But today I'm here to give this story again to you all guys so that you can learn from it because there is a lot to learn from it and it is very very relatable to this guy that was on online dating apps scamming ladies because the guy could first spend on you and then bring you to an airbnb or maybe go to your house and then starts asking huge amount of money if you don't give he could tell you your life is in danger you know so people could give in money until this horrible thing 
happened recently the lady lost her life i repeat we don't know if she was asked money to or what really happened i don't know the kenyan police the investigators will do their work so to my story guys yes one time i almost lost my life but <laughs> there is a lot of things that helped me and we're going to find out what really saved me so the story starts like this i told you guys i used to work and then i lost my job yes i woke up in the morning and went to work i got terminated <laughs> there is a story behind it but that's a story for another day of what really happened so after losing my job what i did i had to sit down and think how can my life keep moving forward i have a rent to pay i have to eat i have to buy water because in africa i was living in dar es Salaam, you had to buy water daily yes jerry cans of water so that you can have a shower so that you can cook you can wash your dishes so i had really lots of bills to take care of and i had lost my job and i didn't have lots of savings with me so the little money that i had after thinking very, very well, I had to start selling second-hand clothes. Yes, I could wake up four in the morning, go to this wholesale market where they sell second-hand clothes, and, and then I go to sell them in a retail way. So I could go to hostels where there are university students. <laughs> I could go to this massage parlor where there are lots of beautiful ladies there. So I could sell women clothes. And you know, I've got a very good sense of fashion. So yes, I could choose really cute, cute clothes. Yes, they're second hands, but they were cute. And I could get clients. You know, my life kept on moving like that, guys. <laughs> yeah, I started with a very little capital, guys. 80,000 Tanzanian shillings. And after some few months, my capital increased to 400,000 Tanzanian shillings. It kept on growing until I opened a shop. I started buying, you know, those clothes in big quantity, then sell them so I could sell women clothes and kids clothes. Everything was fine. Me doing my business and I was able even to get people to help me, then I pay them. <laughs> yeah, so as I had people to help me sell the clothes, I kept on looking for another job. So yes, guys, at the time I was looking for jobs everywhere. <laughs> there is this friend of mine who was in a marriage for six years, was married to a very rich guy, but you can't believe this guy chased her away like a dog with only her bags. She left with nothing and she had nowhere to stay. So after me talking to her, I was like, come stay with me. We are going to be living together because I am single. I don't have any guy. You know <laughs> what I eat, you will eat. So I started living with her and I had another friend was actually a colleague in another office we had worked together and this lady told me bring your cv so i told the friend i was living with you can also prepare your cv i'll tell my friend <laughs> so we all prepared our cvs and we took the cv to my friend and my friend had to present them to the boss because <laughs> my friend was so trusted had worked for so many years with that company so yes guys your girl was hustling you know trying to make Make a living <laughs> yes so after some few days we were called for an interview we went made an interview and we passed the interview we got a job <laughs> So what was this job all about? I told you guys at the university, I started marketing. So I got a job as a sales officer. <laughs> you 
yeah so that company could give in a truck a very big truck full of products then you go to the market you know to the shops but but not those small small shops no those bigger shops that buys things in bigger quantity wholesale shops yeah so i got the job my friend got a job we are very very happy but at first we were not given any truck <laughs> because <laughs> they could give you a truck a driver and someone to carry the products and supply them to the customers so we were told to wait we kept on waiting so we could just go and sit on a bench morning till evening then go back home <laughs> And at that time, my head was, you know, <laughs> paining, like my business is there and I am here waiting to be given this truck. Because my friend told me, don't worry, everything will be fine. At the time they give you the truck, your life will be... <laughs> yeah, so I kept on waiting, being patient. And after three weeks of sitting on a bench, using my money for transport every day to go to wait to be given that truck. Yes, I was given a truck, but my friend was still waiting. They told her to keep waiting. So when I started working, you know, go to clients in the market, actually the market I'm talking about, you could move shop to shop. They could give you a route to pass. Like this route is yours. So, so all these wholesale shops that are in this route are yours. You are the one to supply here. But actually I wasn't the one where like three trucks passing same same route but with different products so some could sell rice cooking oil sugar wheat flour edible products but my truck i wasn't selling edible products i was selling only detergent you know in a powder form yeah cartons and cartons of detergents yeah so i could supply them to my clients and after supplying they pay you then at the end of the day you go with a huge amount of money <laughs> it was very very risky <laughs> I was super super scared that, that oh my god let me hope all goes well nothing happens to me like being robbed I had lots of stories of how you know the driver and that guy that supplies things to clients they can organize <laughs> and run away with the truck so my prayer was everything to go well and yes everything kept on going well I could also take my friend along with me to the market okay <laughs> so i really really loved the work that i was doing because i could meet people the clients and the clients really liked me so much they could even joke when they could see me with my friend <laughs> They could be like, oh, your boss is very, very clever. He's only hiring these cute, cute girls <laughs> to make us buy and buy and buy. When you come to the shop, we can't even say no. <laughs> Main clients. <laughs> and they could call me Miss Smile. You know, but, you know, I could take advantage of that to sell more and more <laughs> So I think the client was really right. <laughs> yeah, so whenever they could see my smile, bring, bring more, bring more. <laughs> A hundred cartons of detergent. <laughs> yeah, so business was really moving good. So guys, I've told you that I had my own route to supply the products to clients who had shops in that route. But sometimes, if you could be stopped by a client, maybe he wants 10 cartons of detergent, you could, you know, sell them. <laughs> Even if he had no shop, you could just sell them, give the receipts and everything. Done. What matters is that you made a sale. <laughs> so one day, I had stationed at a certain shopping center. I was in the truck but that guy that supplies the product was still you know supplying the detergents as i was waiting for him to finish then i moved in to do all the calculations and take the money so there was me the driver and my friend in that truck and then came a guy said that 
he wanted some detergents. He had a pickup. So when my guy came, that one who supplies the products, I told him that guy with the pickup wants 30 cartons of detergents. So the cartons were taken to his pickup and yes, this guy paid then left. The day continued as usual and then it came to an end. So after like two days, same same guy returned and bought some detergents from me. Then another something like four days passed, the same same guy returned. But when he returned, yes, he wanted to buy detergents, but he started talking with my friend. And then, yes, I had to comment too of what, you know, he was talking about. And then that is when he got so close to me to ask for my phone numbers. <laughs> And I told you guys that I was someone who really was playing hard to get. So it was so difficult for a guy to get my number. I could just smile at you and say, no, I'm not giving you my number. <laughs> and a guy could be like, how is it even possible? She was smiling at me. But yes, I told the guy, no, I can't give you my phone numbers. So the guy left and something like a week after the guy returned. But when he returned, I saw him talking so much to my friend. After buying detergents from me, kept on talking with my friend. Even, you know, they went to a certain shop far away from where I was. And they were talking. I was like, what is happening with these two? Then my friend returned, he was like, that guy is so funny, he has bought me some air time. <laughs> and she took her air time and also bought me some air time to put on my phone. I was like, okay. <laughs> but I didn't see any danger, guys, not at all. Because it's my friend that brought it. <laughs> yeah, so I continued with my work and that day ended then i arrived home so in the evening i got a message from a stranger and reading that message i had to check the whatsapp photo you know to get to understand who is this person writing to me and i saw a face of that client oh my god i was like how did he even get my number i had to ask my friend did you give my whatsapp numbers to that guy and my friend was like yeah i gave it to him the guy is so nice he's so funny and you know what this evening i'm taking you out for dinner so get ready <laughs> I'm like, where did you get the money? Because remember, my friend was still on the bench. She wasn't working. Actually, I was the one providing for her. So telling me I am taking you out for dinner, <laughs> it really surprised me. And I had to ask her, where did you get the money? <laughs> and she was like, you know what? When I went to talk to that guy, he bought airtime, but he also gave me some money. And that's how I had to give in your whatsapp numbers i was kind angry at her but at the same time you know <laughs> i was like i can defend myself if he misbehaves i'm going to block him simple as that but i know you wanna know did i go for dinner with my friend yes we went for dinner and ate really really good you know what guys in life especially most of us ladies we have committed lots of mistakes when it comes to dating, when it comes to relationships. Some might have committed these mistakes in their teenage age. But some, like me, I told you, it took me so long to start dating. <laughs> Not talking of even sharing my goodies. It really took so long, but that did not stop me from committing these mistakes. And I've been, you know, advising you if a lady comes and think maybe her situation is the worst, I encourage her, tell her, I have been there. You know, shit's happen in life. So don't keep on punishing yourself. Just move forward, but learn from your mistakes. So before I started sharing this story, I talked of online dating and you guys 
to be careful to respect yourself to think of the things or the way that your parents brought you up don't disappoint them don't go and start acting like you're untouchable because these cruel guys will touch you girl <laughs> and it is going to affect your whole life so when it came to me dating yes i committed a lot of mistakes but to be honest with you how my brothers brought me up because i'm an orphan i grew up being guided by my sisters you know my brothers oh my god my brothers were very very protective of me <laughs> So that created a fear in me of not doing anything off. <laughs> Shaped me to do things the right way. So that is number one that really saved me in this story. So let's continue, guys. So guys, after enjoying our dinner, the dinner that was offered by that guy that my friend gave my phone numbers to we went back home and after arriving home this guy was calling like crazy and when i peeked he started telling me he wants to see me the next day i told the guy no i cannot see you he was like i would really want to talk to you oh my god you're so beautiful you are a woman to marry i've been observing you you know the way you do things it's all that I have always wanted. So please, please give me the chance so that we can talk. <laughs> ah, one thing I have learned with my African brothers, they are blessed with sweet talk. They've got a very sweet tongue and these people can insist. These people can love bomb you. <laughs> A black guy, when he wants a woman, he will do anything to make sure he gets that woman using his tongue. <laughs> and they are so easy to believe. <laughs> you trust them due to their sweet words. So this guy insisted on meeting me the second day. I kept on saying no for an hour you know whenever i wanted to hang up the guy could say no please please let's meet tomorrow but still i won i said no i told you guys always stand on your grounds and when you say no mean it that it is a no so i said no and then he ended the call was he was like he's going to contact me the next day and wished me a good night but my friend was like you can give him a chance you know you can go <laughs> meet him was like no not as fast as he wants <laughs> i have to do things my own way you know at my own time <laughs> Yeah, so the day ended like that and the next day I went to work as usual. This guy kept on sending me message, the good morning message, I got it. You know, lunchtime, yes, he sent me a message. When I was about to go home, he called. He came again with the same, same request, wanting to meet me. I was like, no, I cannot meet you. I've got lots of things to do, you know, during the week, maybe weekend. <laughs> And I told him we can meet either Saturday or Sunday. I will be free. But it's not that in the evening after work, I had what to do, like a lot. No, but I never wanted this guy to see me as someone you no know, desperate or as someone who does not have anything to do. You know, a guy tells you you have to meet tomorrow and then you start panicking and organizing yourself. I have to meet him. No. <laughs> So that is why I said no and I was playing hard to get. <laughs> yeah, so eventually this guy accepted and he was like, it's okay, we can meet on Saturday. And started telling me that that Saturday he wants to take me shopping, he's going to spoil me, you know. <laughs> Promising me a lot, a lot guys. And I was like, hmm wow my friend was there you know yeah this guy looks like you know he has got money <laughs> take the chance 
so yes guys that week we really kept on communicating with this guy he could only call to praise me this guy could praise me and praise me and praise me <laughs> but at the same time wanted to know my roots you know like where i come from <laughs> <laughs> my tribe and all that because you know serious guys that wants to marry they first ask you like which tribe are you from it's very very important if you're an african you know <laughs> oh my goodness but we have got red flags here before i even continue with this story so yes guys as much as this guy wanted to know my roots yes of course I asked him too, you know, wanted to know his roots. And he told me he is from Kigoma and the tribe is Muha. <laughs> his job told me he was a soldier. Yeah, a military guy. Used to work at Lugalo. <laughs> Tanzanians understand very, very well what I am talking about. So at Lugalo, there is a military, I don't know if I should call it a unit, I don't know if I should call it a barracks, <laughs> I don't know how, you know, the perfect English for it, but it's a place where these military guys stay. There is also a school and a hospital, but all governed or under the military. So he told me he works there and he lives there. So after telling me that information, I started calming down and started looking at him on a different, you know, a different way. <laughs> yeah, he's a soldier. <laughs> what can make you not to trust a soldier, guys? <laughs> but we have got some red flags before I even continue with this story. So whether you're searching for love on online dating apps whether you are in real life, whether you're searching for a white guy, whether you're searching for a black guy, you meet a guy, let's say, on online dating apps or even in real life, you exchange WhatsApp numbers and then immediately this guy is forcing to see you the next day. Like he is acting, if he doesn't see you the next day, he's going to lose his life. <laughs> if you see him on that race, something is off. Always Follow your intuition. A woman's intuition. Never do something that you don't feel like doing. If something deep inside is telling you, girl, take things slow, take things slow. You don't need to run the same race that this guy is running on you. Because most of these guys, especially black guys, you find maybe you're living in the same country, and this guy got your number immediately. He wants to see you the next day. Yes, I told you, if you are online and maybe you are living in the same country, you don't need to chat for lots of months before you meet. But not the next day, guys. <laughs> if you told this guy, I can't meet you next day, he should understand. Not start acting like, no, he's losing his breath. <laughs> go on a date with him the next day why is he so much in a hurry <laughs> most of them wants to take you to bed that's it but also most of them might be very dangerous to an extent of having an intention of running a very fast race so that they can take your life they can harm you so guys this is among online dating rules and always follow it. If you don't want to be in trouble, you are on online dating apps, you chat with a guy, and maybe you are in the same country, the first meeting should never be at night. And to make things worse, don't go to the places that you don't know. Don't let that guy be the one to choose of the place where you guys should meet for the first time okay so take your time go meet this guy maybe for coffee go meet this guy maybe for just a drink talk and you know with our african brothers if they want something they will do anything to get it so take that as an advantage of asking questions 
of wanting to see things with your eyes, not only words. Get to know his family, you know, get to know where this guy works. It's very, very important. And when you go on a date, at least tell one of your friends, those trusted friends or anyone in your family that you trust. You're comfortable, you know, to share such kind of information with him or her that you are going on a date, even if it is during the day. It's very, very important, guys. I talked to black guys, but even white guys, if he is serious with you, if he wants to be with you, whatever information you're going to ask, he will not take it the bad way. He won't ghost to you. He won't tell you you're aggressive. He won't tell you you're running too fast. No, he will give you that information so that you can trust him and eventually be together. So you imagine, guys, I met this guy at work. You know, when I was working, he used to be the client who came to buy detergent from me, but we never gone on a date and we haven't like constructed anything like a relationship. He's already promising me the world. He's already telling me he wants to spend on me. He wants, you know, to take me shopping. If you're a woman, put a question mark. Why? <laughs> Why should you spend on me? Did I tell you I don't have clothes to wear? Did I tell you I don't have shoes? <laughs> Did I tell you I want you to spend on me? Maybe I'm lacking something? No, I didn't. So why should you start, you know, putting strange things in your mind that you want to spend on me? Of course, something fishy is going on in his mind. I told you guys, let us all stop liking free things. Please, please. Because we talk like this and after some time, people don't listen. You hear other horrible stories. So guys, this guy, his name is Patrick, told me he works at Lugalo, but I did not go to check if it's true he works at Lugalo. He told me he is from Kigoma, but I didn't know anything about his family. But I wish I had investigated on him before going on a date with him. Really, it is something I regret. So back to the story. Yes, guys, we kept on communicating and Friday came. But when Friday came, I had not made my hair. <laughs> so I had to tell Patrick, you know what? Let us move our meeting to tomorrow because I want to make my hair. And then he started telling me, should I send you money to make your hair? I told him, no, I have money to do my hair. He was like, okay, no problem. I'm going to treat you like a queen. You're not going to lack anything, you know? <laughs> From that day, we are going to meet. So yes, Saturday came and I went, did my hair, looked really beautiful. Where we were supposed to meet, it was a place that I chose. This place is in Mikocheni. <laughs> the bar is called Container. Yeah, very famous, you know, in Mikocheni. <laughs> It's a bar, but you can also eat. They've got nyamachoma, you know, <laughs> barbecue, and you know, those yummy, yummy food. So where that container bar is, it's very close to where the mother of my friend lives. You can actually count because houses there have got gates. So you can count gate one, gate two, the third gate, that's the house, of my friend's mother. Now you're like, Bella, you told me she didn't have where to go. I don't want to go so deep, but her mother's house wasn't all that big to accommodate her after being chased away by the husband. So yes, back to the story. Saturday, I did my hair and on Sunday morning, we went to my friend's mother's place. After arriving there, you know, we talked and then they cooked. After eating, we're supposed to meet at two with that guy, <laughs> two in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, so after eating, I had to take shower, you know, prepare myself, look cute. And it was just walking, you know, to container bar. But when the time arrived, 
actually hours late <laughs> you know women we like to prepare ourselves so sometimes we take long the guy called me and was like i am here at container bar i told him give me a minute i'll be there and yes guys i walked but when i was walking out of the gate i told my friend i am going to be updating you on everything that happens so yes guys i went so quickly you know not to keep him waiting for so long and when i arrived i can't tell you i hugged him no because that culture is not so common in africa like hugging each other every time you meet between a man and a woman or even relatives like like hugging every time no so i just greeted him hi hi mambo poa then yeah i had to sit down so when i sat down the guy started you know praising me telling me i looked so beautiful and he's actually so much in love with me so i told him thank you and he asked me if i wanted to eat i told him no i'm full i just finished eating <laughs> And he was like, why did you eat? We are supposed to meet, eat here, drink. I was like, no, I just decided to eat home. <laughs> that one had upset him so, so much. I noticed it. So he kept on talking and then he ordered food, mishkaki. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys what is mishkaki. <laughs> Yeah, so he ordered mishkaki, he ordered beer, but at that time, guys, I wasn't taking alcohol, so I took soda. <laughs> I ordered for soda. So I took soda and the guy insisted that I should eat. So what I did, I took only one mishkaki and I ate. He kept on talking to me. At that time, I also sent a message to my friend that everything is fine. The guy is angry why I ate. You know, girls thing. <laughs> when you have a friend that you can share everything, yeah. So I was sharing everything that was going on, just like she was there. <laughs> So guys, as I was sending messages to my friend, this guy got upset. He started telling me, who are you chatting to? Why are you sending messages while you are with me here? You know, we are on a date. You don't have respect. What kind of a woman are you? God. <laughs> guys, I know you don't know me very well, but as you keep on sticking here, <laughs> You will eventually know me better and better. I'm someone who doesn't like to be commanded or to be told, do this, you know, in a commanding way. No, you can't do that on me. <laughs> Even my siblings knows that, you know, <laughs> we're born with different characters. So I am like that. So when this guy told me, whom are you chatting to? You're not supposed to write to anyone. I told the guy, hell no, I'll keep on using my phone. You can't stop me from using my phone. And then this guy was like, you're big headed, aren't you? You don't know me very well. Put that phone down. Guys, this all happened in a daylight. It was around two in the afternoon on Sunday and that bar had lots of clients. It was full. It's not that I was only me and the guy, but he had the audacity to talk to me in that way. Imagine guys. So guys, I refused and I kept on even telling my friend what was happening. My friend was like, maybe you come back home. I was like, yes, not so long. I will be back. Because at that time, my blood was boiling. <laughs> so guys, this guy kept on seeing me typing. And he got super angry. He told me, oh my God, the way I saw your face, you know, you have that innocent face. I thought you are that soft woman, but I can see you are a tough woman. But with me, you cannot be tough. But at that time for me, guys, I was waiting for the waiter to pass and then I pay for my drink. I never wanted at all, at all, that guy to pay for my drink because things were here, guys. <laughs> so, guys, as I kept on waiting for the waiter, I kept on, you know, writing to my friend you know, and even not talking bad about <laughs> After making me upset, you know... <laughs> He's very ugly. <laughs> Even this 
describing, you know, the way he is dressed up. <laughs> Guys, you know, when you are young, <laughs> sometimes, you know, there are certain behaviors. <laughs> You know, there are certain things that you do and later on you laugh and be like, but I acted childish. Yeah. So I kept on chatting with my friend and the guy now got super angry and took my phone. He was like, I've told you, do not write to anyone while you are here chatting with me. So after finishing my drink, I want to take you shopping. And that shop that the guy was telling me that he wants to take me to, it was on Sunday. That shop wasn't open. So I told him, by the way, that shop is not open, but I think we can postpone this shopping thing and do it some other time. In my mind, knowing that it will be the last time me seeing that guy. Yes, for me, it was over, but I never wanted to tell the guy right away that it's over because already he was aggressive in his words. So I told him, let's do it some other time. And guess what this guy told me, guys? No, we are going shopping today, not some other day. I'm finishing my drink we are going so he told me i have come with a motorbike and that is my driver he will be driving us to go shopping if that shop is closed we will go to the mall the malls are open it is sunday all the malls are open and then waved at the driver like hello oh my god the driver waved back so he was like i finished we go i was like i'm not going anywhere remember guys this guy has got my phone he took it because he doesn't want me to chat with anyone so i kept on telling him give me my phone i want to go i am not going for shopping with you and i really regret that i did not shout you know to ask for help to tell people that this guy has taken my phone i want my phone back so that i can go i don't know what came over me maybe due to how this guy was shouting <laughs> he kind of put me down maybe in the way that i was acting i kept on politely requesting him to give me back my phone and my phone was so new it had only three days <laughs> Yeah, I had just bought it. Oh my God, after so much sacrifice of saving and I was so connected to that phone, guys. So the guy refused to give me the phone. He ate, he finished his drink. He stood up and called that motorbike driver. The motorbike driver came close because that container bar, it's not that you sit inside. No, everything is outside. Then there is a lot of trees, you know, so you sit under those trees. There are some chairs and everything. So there was also a road, you know, passing by. And when you cross the road to the other side, that is when you go to the house of my friend's mother. Yeah, so the motorbike came. So this guy sat on the motorbike as it was already on, like making those noises. <laughs> so yes, this guy ordered me to sit on the motorbike with him so that we can go. I kept saying no, and you can't believe I did not believe it too. With my own two eyes standing there, the motorbike started moving. And I kept on telling him, give me my phone. <laughs> Guys, I know right now you're laughing a lot. Imagining <laughs> how small I was, like begging him, give me back my phone. And the motorbike is moving. He started moving slowly, telling me, come. I told him, no. Come, I told him, no, give me back my phone. Then he told me, if you are not coming, then forget about your phone. I was like, okay, if you're taking my phone, just take it. But me, coming with you is a big no. I am not coming. And he left, guys. So, guys, that is how I was robbed. My phone went just like that. I couldn't believe it. I went back home. I told my friend to start calling the number. She called, but the guy was not picking at all. But what do we learn from this, guys? Never trust a stranger. 
the fear that I had in him, the fear or the way that I was brought up, I was brought up to never follow strangers to a place that you don't know because you don't know where someone can take you and something else is that you know most men not all of them they have put this into their mind that we like free things we like good things so for him to get to you so that he can harm you will you same same things that you like to promise you, I want to take you shopping, I'll buy you this, I'll buy you that. If you're not clever enough, if you are desperate, if you like easy things and you think that this world is full of good people, my dear sister, you are going to be in trouble. Let us all learn. So imagine a guy who was promising me that he's going to take me shopping. I don't know, buy expensive things for me. He ran away with my phone. What if I followed him? What could have happened to me? The worst. Because we had to start investigating about him. That is why I told you I regret why I never investigated on this guy before going on a date with him. So always investigate. Have enough information before you go to meet a guy that is a stranger to you. So guys, what we did after that incident, my friend had to talk, you know, to the mother. <laughs> now we started talking. It was between me and my friend. But because this guy took my phone, so when I returned back home, I started crying. I have lost my phone. A very expensive phone, guys. You can't just say, ah, tomorrow I'm going to buy a new one. No. <laughs> I was supposed to again save and save for months before I get a phone like that. Yeah. So I cried a lot and then the mother saw me. That's when my friend told her what had happened to me. And then the mother was like, do you know this guy very well? I was like, he said he works at Lugalo. And the mother was like, no, I have someone who works at Lugalo, actually is a military. So give me his name and his phone numbers so that I can talk to my friend who works to where he said he works. And luckily guys, yes, I knew his full name. He had told me and with the phone number, we had saved his number too on my friend's phone. So we gave the information to the mother and they investigated about him. He does not work at Lugalo, but the information we got he was a criminal, yes. The police knew about him because Patrick was involved in a shooting in Arusha. There is this rich guy in Arusha that was shot when he was entering into his premises right at the gate. Found these criminals, they shot at him and then ran away. They did not take anything from him. So it was like three years back. I don't know how Patrick got out of jail, but yes, they told us that is Patrick. So my friend didn't believe. She kept on calling and calling and calling until the next day. That is when Patrick peaked and he was like, I'm not even in Dar es Salaam. I am in Arusha. What do you want? Who are you? I don't know you at all. Guys, I was so disappointed. I regretted that day that I accepted to go on a date with that guy. But I also thank God that I was brave enough not to fall into his trap and i had to let go of my dear phone i was like take the phone but i am not coming so some days passed but i kept on thinking about it and again and again i was like oh my god i escaped death because this guy who knows maybe he could take me deep in the forest rape me and take my life because someone who is capable of shooting another human being i'm not all that special you know to leave me alive so guys let's all be careful whether you are on online dating apps whether in real life these guys that have got bad intentions you know they look at where there is any weakness they use your weakness you know, to get to you and then do bad things to you. Those who be on online dating apps and then you chat with a guy after some few months of chatting, he wants to invite you in his country, I gave you the guide. Get to know the guy very well. 
Ask all the questions that you are supposed to ask. And don't let this guy tell you I have booked for a hotel for you. You will stay at the hotel. I don't want my name to appear in your visa application. No matter how much money he wants to give to you, do not take that risk. Don't do it. Please, please, better stay single and happy with your life than thinking maybe the guy is in love with you, wants to be with you, but go treat you badly if you remember Caroline's story or even, you know, you lose your life in the process. So guys, let me hope my story has inspired you, my story has opened your eyes, my story has given you, you know, the courage to keep standing on your ground and do the right thing. If you have liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something. Watch my other videos too, they are super super good. Comment below what you think about this video, I would like to know. Subscribe please if you have not subscribed, join the family and thank you for subscribing. Until next time guys, I love you so much, you're always here in my heart. Ciao ciao!